It's r2youtube.com. That's r the number two youtube.com and tell them Velvet sent you. Oh yeah. Hey, it's Cody here from Wrestling Rage, and I am joined by Impact star Rohit Raju. Now, before I start asking him any questions, do me a favor and smash the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. So, Rohit, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's awesome to be here, man. I love doing these things. Awesome. So, listen, man, I got to ask you. You're from Saginaw, Michigan. Correct. And, and you are now in Impact. You know, we know that. But how does a kid from Impact get started? Not even so much kid, but how does anybody from Saginaw get started in professional wrestling? Uh, you know, it's really funny. I've always been into professional wrestling ever since I was a kid. I remember being in high school and we were doing this. Um, I don't know, some assignment, and it was, what do you want to be when you when you grow up? So I'm on the computer looking up information about being a professional wrestler, and the teacher walks up to me, and she's like, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm looking up what I want to be when I grow up. She's like, that's, you need something better than that. You can't, you know, and I just, I found that so funny. It was just like, hmm, okay, cool. And um, she's like, you, you know, look up like a lawyer or whatever. And so I'm thinking to myself, it's not what I want to be. So after I got out of high school, I tried to afford, you know, I, I wasn't, I started working and I wasn't familiar how money worked. <laughs> and I was working and working and working and I couldn't afford the schools that I wanted to go to. And it wasn't until a few years later, you know, I would do like the backyard wrestling and just messing around and always trying to be a professional wrestler, never claiming to be, just, just you know, having fun. And then I found out about a school that I could go to in uh, Davidson at the time. It was Xavier Justice. Now he runs a school out in Flint. It was an old barn. And we trained out there, and I could train a couple days a week. I trained for six months. Trained in the wintertime, which sucked. The ring would be frozen. I would have those hunter, you know, like hunters put them in their gloves and their socks. Yeah. To warm hands. I would have two packs of those in there while I'm wrestling in amateur wrestling shoes. And like triple layers of clothes on, taking body slams. And man, it was terrible. Summertime was great, but I always wanted to do it. And when I found out, every time I would kind of have an opportunity, I would always check into it. And then I just did it. I ended up getting trained and I ended up being good at it. And I just pursued it. And there was a point in time I was doing that in mixed martial arts. And I said, well, if professional wrestling doesn't take off, I'm probably just going to stick with MMA. And then I went to a Ring of Honor camp, and I stood out. I remember the head guy there was delirious at the time, and I, I pulled him aside. I said, I know you gave everybody you know, a general critique. What can I do? And he put me over big time. And they actually they had tryout matches. I remember Michael Elgin walked up to me and – um, the guy I was working with, he says, make sure you guys do a good job because they're watching you guys. And I cut a promo for Kevin Kelly, and I killed it. He told everybody what my promo was, and he goes, that's what I want to see. This is the type of promo that I want to see from everybody. And he put me over as well. And then I was like, well, hey, man, maybe I got a chance. So I just started going to Ring of Honor shows, going to more camps, and I got booked, and I kept on getting booked with them. And you know, I just kept going from there, and next thing you know, I'm at Impact. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so now, before Global Forged and before Impact, you were on the independence. I mean, you're still on the independence, but uh, uh, nine years, man, the grind, right? So what those nine years that you were roughly, give or take, you know, you were on independence, what did that do for you for your career now? You know what I mean? How did that prep you for now? Um... Just really listening to, you know, my peers, always asking for advice, watching the matches, seeing what uh, what was going on, and just paying attention and always trying to get better. 
constantly watching professional wrestling at home, whether it was old stuff, new stuff, and then just trying to perfect my craft, man. And then just getting experience, going to shows, not knowing if I'm going to get paid at first, making the drives with a group full of people, and just trying to get experience. And next thing you know, some, you know, some people see you, they start to vouch for you because they like your style. And, you know, you, you honestly just have to make those sacrifices and, and, and put yourself out there. A lot of times I failed. I, I never thought, like, man, there was a chance, there was a time there I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it, you know, because yeah. it wasn't because I never thought I wasn't good enough. I always thought I was good enough. I always knew my worth. But it was, it just seemed like, well, I don't know anybody in the business. I don't know anyone that's going to stick their neck out for me that has any real connections. So I, who knows what's going to happen. I just kept hustling, and, you know, here we are. Yeah. Impact Wrestling, I got a shot. I took advantage of it. I did well. And now I'm continuing every opportunity they throw at me. I, I try to take advantage of that. and outshine anybody in any way shape or form be different from other people so mm -hmm. hopefully they recognize that i say this every podcast i'm hoping the main guys in the office see what i can bring to the table and they're like hey let's give this guy more because that's what i'm really trying to do right now good no well, that definitely tells us what we're looking at in the future from rohit raju um now we, I said something about Global Forged a minute ago. Can you tell us, you know, for those people out there that may not know what Global Forged was, could you tell them exactly what it was? The whole concept started, well, at first it was a tryout. You had a dual tryout for Pro Wrestling Noah and Impact Wrestling. Okay. Myself, Jake Something, and I can't remember who else it was. Well, Aegis Abraham, he was one of the coaches there. Uh, but we had already had our foot in the door because, oh, Joe Coleman, we had already wrestled for Impact, I think it was April 2017. So we kind of already had our foot in the door. So we went there for the Pro Wrestling Noah. That's the only reason why we went there. But we did a really good job, and then Scott goes, hey, we're doing this thing called Global Forged. It's, a, it's like a competition. We want you guys involved in it. Would you come out here and be a part of it? We're going to show it on Impact's YouTube and on TV. It'll give you more exposure. So we did it. I couldn't make it every day. But what I did was I had matches. Every time I had a match on the weekend, I would cut a promo at the school. So the judges would still see me cut promos. Mm. So at the end of the day, at the end of the competition, I was their top pick. And they, they sat there and said, like, hey – the total package is Hakeem. Hakeem Zane, obviously, was the name you know I used before. And that was because I could cut the promo. I was in shape, and my ring work you know, was good. And they said, he has everything. Jake, I thought it would have been myself or Jake. Jake, at the time, his promos weren't as great as they are now. Right now, he's just, boom, he's blowing up. Jake, something that is. Yeah, well, but at the time, I still edged him out with the personality bit. And then I got – they said, hey, we pick – Hakeem to be our main guy so it was almost like a tough enough style thing where we would do matches we would do drills and they would see who had heart and anytime we would do any side stuff there's a lot of stuff that did get shown yeah, we were at the hockey games trying to hand out tickets I acted a fool I always showed personality because there was a camera on me so of course I want to show personality and of course I want to show that hey I have the charisma and the in-ring work ability to be the guy you want, and it ended up working out. Right. And I went to um, Ottawa for the tapings. I wasn't signed, and I wrestled Eddie Edwards on Explosion. I wrestled Ishimori, which was, I loved it. And then I had a, a six-man tag. It was Desmond, Sanjay, and Garza Jr. against myself. Uh... I just said this the other day, um, the Carolina Caveman, and then uh, I, I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> and then, uh, oh my God, Caleb, Caleb oh, Conley. Okay. And um, we we had a six man tag, and then I did well. And next thing I know, I got a call from Scott in the summer, so that next time we're I see you, I'm gonna put a contract in front of you. We want to sign you, so that was pretty cool. So you knew before they they tape that episode where they announced you as the winner so you knew before that no i did no? not i was the winner until they said it was at 
we did the BCW match, and it came down to myself and Mark Wheeler, mm -hmm. and they wanted to see who did best when we performed. And um, I guess I just outshined them, you know. And I think obviously it was just everything else. When you look, when you go back and you look at the Global Forge footage, you can see the judges. Right, every single judge, they're like Hakeem, Hakeem, right, Hakeem. Yeah. If anyone has the whole package, it was me. So right. I think the lines were made up no matter what. And then we didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. And then they literally sat us aside and said, and they told us. And I was like, wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that so, is awesome. So, uh, real, you know, Scott Demore, Executive Vice President of Impact Wrestling, also Can Am head head guy, basically Windsor. What influence, you know, did you were training with him before a little bit? What, you know, what influence has he had on your career? Well, like I said earlier, I started out with Xavier Justice. When I was cleared with him, I would go down to the House of Truth, and it was years later. Myself, Joel Coleman, Idris was already training there. And Jake, something we wanted a little something different, and we knew one of the best places to go was the Can Am Dojo. I mean, the, their reputation speaks for itself. So we went there, and the style was very tight. I, I guess you could say it was very crisp, and I learned new things. And Scott's a taskmaster, and, and so was uh, Bravo. All these guys were. Johnny Divine was there at the time. Bolin was there at the time. Phil Atlas would be up there. And they would just be, they would tell you flat out, you know, they would help you out, but they were very, it was very hard, but that was, that's how I wanted it. You know, they pulled no punches. And I think it helped me become a better wrestler. And I still go up there from time to time and, and help other students out. And they will tell me still if, you know, my ring work is certain things, but I've come to the point now where I, I can help out there at the school too, if, if need be, which is great because I have nothing but respect for all those guys that I mentioned in that school, and I always claim them on part of my training as well. And Scott, yeah. Scott's been around forever, man. And yeah. He knows wrestling inside and out, and um, he he just knows how it works. And you know, that's the guy when he comes up to you and tells you something about your match. A lot of times he won't be nice about it, and then sometimes he will. But that you just got to take it. You got to have a thick skin. You got to be right. able to take it. And when I when he pulls me aside, he says, "Hey, I like this. I like this, but I didn't like that." The fact that he pulled me aside and will tell me that means he was watching it. Means he was paying attention. Means he he, he gave a rat's ass about it. So that's yeah. a big thing, and that's something that any wrestler should aspire to have someone that high up watch your stuff and tell you give you the criticisms and give you the time of day. So yeah, for sure. So, you know, we talked a little bit about global forge there and we, and I, you know, I wanted to ask uh, real quick um, when you found out, you know, you, you, you said, you know, like, did you do anything after like, so after it's all said and done and you're walking out of the building and you're like, did you call somebody? Did, did you, what did you do? Did you like run around circles around can -Am? I mean, I know I probably would, but that's me. No, I honestly don't remember. I think I was still in shock and just sucking it I, in, huh? Yeah. I just honestly soaking it in. And to <laughs> be honest, I'm my own worst enemy with many things. I will, Man, I, I, I do stuff like I, I got it, and so I instantly think, like, man, was it good enough to get it? Or now what's the next step? Now I have to really step it up and be best for what's going to happen next. And so right. I didn't even think about winning it. It never even hit me. I was already thinking about the next thing. I was already thinking about the tapings and what I'm going to do there and how I'm going to perform and uh, what, what I should do to stand out and stuff like that. So – you know, it's weird. Sometimes I'm my, my own worst enemy where I don't enjoy my successes. And sometimes it takes somebody else to remind me. Like I still, you know, I'm signed with Impact, right? And right. I was I actually did a show in my hometown last weekend. And they're all telling me how proud it, how proud of, they, how proud of me they are. And, and they're just saying, man, it's so cool. And I'm thinking we're just talking about the wrestlers. I'm talking like, oh, yeah, you know, RVD, I was eating steak sandwiches with him. And then it hits me, like I mean, I was eating steak sandwiches with RVD in Philadelphia. This right. is the guy. All of us, like my whole crew, would sit down and watch pay-per-views as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. as a teenager. Like that is a big deal. And they're mm -hmm. oohing and on, and like 
they're like, oh my God, Gilo Brown was one of your agents. And I'm like, now I'm just like, yeah, it's no big deal. But like, man, it is a big deal. From where I came from, that's, it's something special. Some, sometimes it sucks. I, my, my, like I said, I'm my own worst enemy where I don't even enjoy the fruits of my labor. I don't even enjoy my victories. And I just, I'm on to the next thing, which I guess is a good and bad thing. Right. Which, I, mean, I can see the good in that, but I can see the bad too, but I can see the good because it's always, you're always trying to, you're moving forward, man. All and the time. You're goal hungry. driven. I can see that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you win, right? You win. And so what now? Like right into impact or was there like a transition period? Like how did it work out? No, I was actually waiting to see what was going to happen next. I knew I did well. I figured they would bring me on for a few more tapings. I didn't know for sure that I would get signed or not. My first match was the tag match with Idris Abraham. We went against Laredo Kid and Garza Jr. I wasn't signed. Idris was. That was April 2017. I got pulled, you know, or not pulled. I got asked or said, hey, we have an opportunity for you when you, when you come down and do this. This is when Jarrett was in charge. Jared really liked me. He pulled me aside. He asked me a lot, a lot of questions about myself. I was like, man, they really like me as a tag team. I'm probably going to get signed. There's an opportunity that I might get signed, and then it just never happened. I was like, man, what did I do? And so when this opportunity happened with Global Forge, I wasn't thinking about, man, I'm going to get signed. I was thinking about what else do I have to do to get signed. And then all of a sudden I got the call from Scott after the tapings. It was, the tapings were in November. I think like November 4th or something like that, that whole week. And then I got the call from Scott in December. And I remember it was around Christmas time, and my wife and I were making Christmas cookies. Like we do this every year for Christmas. And I walked in this room, my weight room, and I walked in here, and he talked to me, and he told me that. And I put the phone down, and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I'm getting fine to impact. And I went out there, and I told her, and she's like, oh, my gosh, he's excited. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, it just, it, I'm, it's so weird. Like, it didn't even hit me. So I'm not even excited. I'm, like, in shock still. And then I text. So I have a group text with a bunch of my buddies. And I text them. I'm like, hey, keep on the low. I, I got signed. And they're all flipping out. And it still didn't hit me, right? It still didn't hit me. And I still don't even think it hit me that I'm signed. It's just so weird. But I am excited. And I am so happy to be there because I used to watch Impact when it was $5 pay-per-views every Wednesday and Low Key was there and AJ Styles yeah. was there and Christopher Daniels was there. The Flying Elvises were there. Stuff like that. Jarrett was there. Saginaw native Monty Brown was there. A guy that I talked to. I see him at the gym a lot. And he, he's one of the coolest guys and he talks to me all the time. And he watches my stuff and he gives me critiques. But I and now that I'm signed with this company that I still have action figures of in my garage when they were TNA somewhere, you know what I mean? Right. It is it blows my mind, but for some reason my dumb ass just can't soak it in. I don't know why. I don't get it. But, I think that's uh, good, but I think that's gonna make you more successful in my opinion. Um, you know, I hope so sometimes I see like I'm I'm so hungry right now and I'm trying to get the management to notice like I'm more, I'm worth more than the spot I'm in. Right. And I never, I don't ever want to come across as saying like, oh, I don't like where I am. I'm complaining. I always try to refer it to nobody that's hungry goes to a job and is satisfied with an entry level position. You always want to bust your butt to be at the top. So I'm yeah. not satisfied with this entry level position that I'm at because I know I'm good enough to take a piece of the ball and run with it. I just need to convince them that. And I'm trying my hardest to do that right now. So, dude, that's so awesome. You, you, you know, I know that sometimes you play a bad guy and, but the message that you're sending right now to the kids, to the people that are watching, that's really awesome. I, I really hope that this works out for you. Um, now listen, with being on that bigger stage, right? You're on, you're in impact, you're on TV. Um, you know, I, I, this won't air, but I know that you got your match with the Laredo kids coming up on impact this, uh, this Friday. Um, what is something that you want the fans to take away from watching you in the ring? If you watch me right now, I am literally a throwback. I'm a mix. I am a throwback of 98 
99, 97 guys. So I come to the ring jaw jacking. I love to cut promos. My biggest influences are Steve Austin, The Rock, Ric Flair, Dusty Rose, Macho Man. 30 years from now, we're always, we're still going to be talking about those guys. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Um, but I still, my style is like a Benoit. It is a hard hitting. I'm like a striker. So I'm not going to go out there and wrestle like the Rascals, which is super popular right now. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. I'm not athletic as they are. I take my martial arts background and I try to in, 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 uh, infuse it with professional wrestling, but the charisma and character work. So when you see me, Laredo Kid, he's super lucha, and I'm going to do my slick stuff in the ring, but after I hit a nice, cute little move, I'm going to take that second and do something. I'm going to brush off my shoulder. I'm going to get my swag on. I'm going to jaw jack. I'm going to do something like that. And I want people to realize, some people pick up pick up on it, and they say the little things you do in between everything, like all your big moves, that's the stuff that attracts me to you. And that's what I want. It's like when Austin would hit the elbow, and then he got in your face, and he did this. That, you know what I mean? Or The right. Rock, after he hit somebody with something, and he would take a second, and he'd smell. That, to me, is professional wrestling. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here and fight with people like, hey, oh, this is – you know what I mean? This whole, right. All that nonsense. Yeah. To me, I try to mix what's hot now, but what's hot in my eyes, which I'm still going back and watching – the promos of, you know, Hogan, Flair, right. Dusty, those guys. Right. And that's why I want people to see that I'm not like anybody else because I'm a hybrid of what once once hot and now what is hot. So I hope right. people pick up on that. Right. I love when, when the guys or anybody for that matter, good or bad, and mostly the bad guys, when they, you know, they're working a guy in the ring and they're, they're yelling at the, shut up! You know, stuff. I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it, man. I love it. Matter of fact, I was at the uh, memorial show. Yeah, know. I saw it. I yeah, thought that. And, yeah, and you were sitting. You came out and sat next to me. I took a selfie with you. I don't know if you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That see, was me, awesome. That's so amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That and those those experiences for people like myself are amazing. And I'll like I will always remember that. You know what I mean? Always. Yep. Um, now I want to kind of get away from some wrestling because we talked a lot of wrestling, but I want, so I'm not going to ask you anything stupid, of course, but um, you know, who inspires you outside of wrestling? Who inspires you the most? Um, you know, I really don't know. I, I don't know anyone and maybe I do. I know a few people that have followed their dreams. It's almost like when you, you asked, how's a guy from Saginaw get to impact wrestling? Right. It's because people are scared to follow their dreams. Bruce Lee is somebody that influenced me. You know, he came over here when a time was it was very racist, but he had a dream and he took his culture, he took his ideas outside of his culture, and he became this megastar. Yeah. And he did it all by following his beliefs and you know, it's selfish sometimes, but if you want to be successful, you kind of have to be and it sucks, but it is. Same thing, and, and it's like like Bob Marley. He had his message, and his message was it's worldwide. You know, you can go anywhere, and people almost anybody will know who Bob Marley is, even if they don't listen to him, they know who he is, and they know they'll probably know a song of his or two. It's guys like that. People, I just think they're scared to follow their dreams. I never wanted to work, stay working a nine to five. I never. I'm an entertainer, man. If I'm out at a bar, if I'm out at a party. Um, if I'm around people and we start just having fun, I just start to come out. I love to crack jokes. I love to be a character, whether it's you know professional wrestling or just me in general. And, and people are just so scared to let loose. And some people like my wife always says, "Man, you're so weird." I am. I'm very weird. I'm I'm, I'm corny. I'm weird. I'm out there, but I'd rather be because I don't want to be normal. Right. Because you don't want to be the same everybody else is. Yeah, you know, like. It like sometimes I get so exhausted from holding all this energy in. I, I just I'll be at home chasing my dog around, screaming like ah, you know, just <laughs> because I just have to. I have to. I have to do something like that. I walk around my house cutting promos every single day. I don't know, man. I, I can't really say anyone that inspired me. Um, 
like that because there's like I said, I know a few people that have chased their dreams, but it was after I was already chasing mine. Gotcha. I just I never wanted to be. I guess, like everybody else, I just love professional wrestling. I always wanted to do professional wrestling. And as soon as I had the opportunity to do it, I went for it. And Not it is, it. and it's just, it's just my calling. And I, I hope everybody else, don't be scared to chase your dream. I, did, I was like late in life still, you know, when I had a chance to chase it. But I never gave up on it. And when I had that chance to chase it, I did. And it's the best thing. It's the greatest thing ever. Uh, I definitely can respect that. Now, what is something that you've accomplished that you're proud of that maybe set, like you know normal fans wouldn't know about? Paying my house off. <laughs> That's a good Man. one. <laughs> oh. oh my god! Paying my house off, getting a new car. 2018 was bittersweet for me when I got signed to Impact. If people don't know this. I was working a full time job for 14 years. 14 years working 44 to 50 hours a week using all of my vacation time for wrestling uh weaseling my way out it, it we yeah man weaseling my way out of of stuff trying to get on shows and i remember scott demore said you're not gonna make it you can't do a full-time job and this well i got signed when i had a full-time job and you know it made like the fact that he told me i wasn't gonna make it made me want to shove that in his face be like yeah i'm gonna make it you know what well, i mean maybe that's but what I, you needed to hear right exactly but i've been hustling all those times you know what i mean i've been right. always hustling forever and i got like when i got signed my job at the time impact was still doing week-long tapings and i said hey i'll step down in april i just need you to work with me for now because i was going to step down in april because i was getting my bonus that i deserved which is a big bonus but no, they kept looking for ways to fire me. So they found one that stuck. They couldn't, they had nothing that was going to stick. And they found one that stuck. And man, it just killed my 2018. My, I luckily I just paid my house off, but like my credit got screwed. I, my, like, and my car payment was super late. And it was like a horrible, it was great because I was signed right. and I was wrestling everywhere, but I still had lost a bunch of income. So a lot of people don't know that. So I was hustling. I've been hustling for years, 14 years, trying to do all this stuff, live an adult life, being, or being, you know, a lot of people, they live at home still while they're trying to wrestle or they live in a big house with a bunch of people. No, I was paying off my, trying to pay off my car, my house, my mortgage, doing grown man stuff. So finally, I got that paid off. I finally got everything turned around in 2019, slowly but surely. So finally, I got a new car. My house is paid off rebuilding my credit i'm still hustling trying to make something happen on impact so man it's a struggle man it's right. still a it's a struggle but nowhere near as bad as 2018 so yeah paying my house off that's oh my god that's yeah, i got i got about 100 g's till i get there but <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's, it's yeah, i know real life is the worst man real yeah. life is the worst. you know what you know though it, it's you got kids man no no, no. not yet huh? all right well so listen, I gotta ask, uh, what do you secretly love about yourself? Ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I would tell you all day long how sweet I am. Right. Outside of the ring, that's I mean, that's just the alter ego coming out. That's me angry me. You know what I mean? That's yeah. me turned up to twenty. Normally I I don't like I love the fact that I'm s I, I stay in shape. I love the fact – I love to lift weights. I love – I know a lot of people are like, well, wrestling isn't a bodybuilder sport, blah, 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 blah. I grew up on it. It was. One of my right. favorites of all time will always be Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, I think you uh, you should somewhat be like an athlete unless your gimmick is like Kevin Owens or right. Braun Strowman or something like that. I mean I'm never going to believe you if you're trying to do all this cool stuff and come across as an athlete but you don't look like one. But if your gimmick is to not look like one, then that's a whole different thing. But that's just me. I know, take it or leave it. People's opinions are different nowadays. Um, and everyone gets fake outrage over everything, so whatever. But that's just one thing. I love being in the gym. It's I love to put my headphones on, go in there, not talk to anybody, hit the iron. I've always been a fan, like I said, of Bruce Lee, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. When I first saw Conan the Barbarian, I was like, who is this guy? Why does he look so awesome? How do I look like that? And I've been obsessed ever since. So 
getting in the ring and just looking like that, and you see pictures, and you're like, man, I look really sweet. And yeah, it's an ego thing, but it also makes you feel good when you leave the gym and you put in some work and and you continuously. The older I get, I still look good, so it, it makes it a big deal for me. I, I think. I don't know what I really love about myself, man. I, I mean, Sounds I like you love a lot to me. <laughs> I, I, guess, but, I mean, I enjoy things, but I don't right. really, I don't, I don't know. I mean, just, yeah. I have You're no humble, idea. though. I give you that. You are very I, humble. I, I, I don't want to be a jerk. You know, no, I want to be no. a jerk I get all it. day long. I can care <laughs> about the Right. You know what I mean? But when, when we're doing, we're in a now, You mentioned uh, Ravishing Rick Rude there oh, yeah. for a second. You know, so... You know, circle back to wrestling, and then I'll get you out of here. Uh, your idol in wrestling, the guy, the one, the one that you said I want to be that guy. I couldn't tell you. Um, I, there's no way I could just pick one guy. I have seven or eight tapes of wrestling wise of just Chris Benoit. You know, and I'm not gonna get into all the whatever. Oh no, no, I do. I do. Talking about professional wrestling right. here. Uh, to me, professional wrestling wise, he was awesome. Yeah, well, for sure. I, 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 I it was a big guy. Nice. So, hey guys, listen, I just want to take a minute to apologize because the audio starts to go a little wonky here. It does get better though, so hang in there and keep watching. Wrestling, uh, uh, all that, that stuff, stuff. Just, just so awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, I, I guess, guess what I always think if I can pick one. one. It would be my turn to make that match. Right. Yeah. They would just freak out. It is To me, my man is one of the best. He had the charisma. He was flamboyant. He had the look. His intensity in the ring. I, if you ever watch me lock up of somebody, I run across the ring and snatch that lock up. That's for my man. You know, that's right. what I absolutely love that. Um, I guess Monster Man would be the guy, and his promos were amazing. I want everyone to, you know, before we wrap it up and stuff, I cut a promo in my hometown. It was amazing. I posted so many posts on Twitter, and then it tagged me, but someone tagged me in the comments, and then I reposted it. It has about 3,000 views. Nobody knows how good of a promo I can cut them. People don't realize this. I don't get a lot of promo time on that. What I want you to do is go to my Twitter, look up the tweet, go watch the promo, tweet it, tag Stone Cold, somebody, somebody tag somebody big. I want to blow up. It's already kind of blowing up. But the promo is amazing. And the whole promo really stems from I come up there, I get the heroes welcome, and then I just crap on everybody. And it's so awesome. And then the promo, I have bullet points that I want to hit. And then after that, it's just me spewing, and I'm just going crazy. And everyone was like, man, how come they don't let this guy do this on TV? So I really want everyone to go up there. I always talk about my promos. This is the promo to go and do it. Tag old Steve Go, go, go tag Steve Ball. Maybe he'll like it. Too, right? I modeled myself after this guy. So not to man, maybe man. But, um, you know, these guys like that. But, For yeah, sure. That, that, I guess I guess man would be my For sure. So, audios. There we go. All right. So, uh, real quick, before we get out, throw out your social media so the people out there can follow you. And, you know, maybe there's a promoter out there, you know, that wants to book you. Throw out the booking info, bro. I'm really hoping these promoters in the UK hit me up because I really want to go over to the UK. Wrestling is huge over there right now. I had sure. a couple of people ask me when I'm coming over there. Anybody can get a hold of me at, at Hakeem Zane. That's H-A-K-I-M-Z-A-N-E. That's my Twitter. If you want to hit me up on Instagram, it's at Raju Zane 80, R-A-J-U, Zane 80. Uh, if you look up Rohit Raju or the Mad Dragon Hakeem Zane, you can find me on Facebook. And then if you go to YouTube, just look up Rohit Raju. I have my own um, – my own channel. I don't really post anything except my content. And then you'll go to, uh, like, if you go to my, um, I got a bourbon, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm unprofessional. But uh, if you go to my, it'll say Hakeem's name promo and matches, I always try to upload that stuff. So if you get a chance, check that out. I honestly appreciate the support. Uh, I also appreciate the hate, too, because that means I'm doing something right. 
this Friday, you can catch me on Impact Wrestling, whether it's on the Pursuit Channel or on Twitch. Big matchup, myself and Laredo Kid. It gets really crazy. I hope you guys check it out. And then tomorrow, I am at Rockstar Pro taking on Aaron Williams. That one will not disappoint. For sure. Well, hey, man, before I get you out of here, I want to tell everybody that all that info will be down in the description of the video so that you can reach out to him. Um, and, again, I want to say thanks so much, man. Uh, this means a lot to me. I really appreciate Dude, it. Dude, I love it. I love doing this stuff. No problem whatsoever. It means a lot to me for you to reach out to ask me to be on your show. Anytime I can talk wrestling or just – shoot the stuff with somebody i'm all about it so thank you oh well thanks so much man and uh i'll let you know when this goes up on youtube for sure so thanks again buddy thank you man i appreciate the it death Red army the eagle city villain aaron o'ryan black diamond jack price the wild child jody threat and weaponized alex weir and you're watching wrestling rage live on friday nights at eight o'clock on youtube